Hi everybody, Andrew here. Uh, welcome back to the RLD video tutorial series. So in this video I'm going to talk to you about the object extrude gizmo. And uh, I'm going to start with a simple example of how to use it by laying down a floor for a dungeon. So I'm going to select this floor piece that I have right here and then I'm going to press Q to activate the extrude gizmo. Now uh, the extrude gizmo is basically a box um, and uh, it basically has like an arrow um, on each of its uh, faces. So when you click and drag one of these arrows, you can see that it leaves a trail of objects behind. Yeah, this is what I call extrusion. And you can, it works with one object or, a multiple, uh, or multiple objects at once. So now I can select these and I can just extrude in that direction. There you go, I already have a really simple floor. And I can just extend this like, you know, as I wish. I can go in any direction uh, that I want. There you go, something like that. Or I can go upwards. And for example, I can, uh, let's just say I want to select this first object right here and this one and this one, like, like the corners, and then I can um, extrude upwards uh, like that, right? Okay, now uh, let me show you some other use cases. Um, I'm going to be using some arch objects because I love them. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put this right over here. And if you've watched the object to object snapping uh, tutorial, you can you know that you can use object to object snapping uh, to complete uh, this arch. But uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the object extrude gizmo and just select this object and just drag and there you go. Uh, we now have the, that area taken care of and let's take care of the other area. Uh -huh. There you go. Of course, I could just duplicate these, but in this particular case, I just want to play around with the extrude gizmo some more, so I can just do something like that. And there you go. And let's just place some uh, some walls. So, for example, something like this. And there you go. And let's just place another one nah, right over there. And now let's select all three of these guys and just, oops, sorry. There you go, yeah. So it's really, really uh, easy to use and it gets really fast results. Uh, also works really well with tile-based worlds. So if you're using tile prefabs uh, for building, uh, you know, tile game levels, uh, it's, it's actually quite a lot of fun. You can build a lot of interesting structures. Um, so yeah, this is, this is, these are the basics. This is uh, how you use the object extrude gizmo. Now, there's just a bunch of things that I want to cover regarding uh, extrude space. So uh, let me just duplicate this object and just place it here in an isolated area. Um, by default, all gizmos work in object local space, uh, which means that the, uh, the gizmos will inherit the object rotation, right? So if I rotate this object, for example, all the gizmos, including the extrude gizmo, will be aligned with the object, uh, uh, will inherit the object rotation. So now I can extrude in this direction, yeah? So you can actually extrude in random directions, right? Uh, if I press the L key, I can switch between um, global and local transform space. Uh, the, the L key actually affects all the gizmos, not only the extrude gizmo. So just uh, keep that in mind. Um, and when working in global space, you can see that the extrude gizmo is, is always aligned with the world axis. Uh, so I can do something like this if I want to. Now, uh, let's switch back to the local uh, extrude space. And now um, I'm going to create another object. I'm going to press I to reset the rotation to identity. And now let's just say that I want to extrude both objects at once. Because I'm using the local extrude space, um, the uh, the gizmo will actually keep the rotation of the of the first object that was selected, and we, it, it will always grow when you click on the second object or third object and so on. Yeah. So in this particular case, the, the first object is this one, so it means that the rotation of this object is um, the one that is used by the gizmo. And when I click on the second object, the gizmo will maintain the rotation, but it will grow to include the second object, right? Now, if I click on this object instead which is aligned with the world axis and then click on the second one again you can see the gizmo hasn't changed the rotation but it it, um, it grows to include the second object and you can actually just um, you know extrude 
um, I pressed L, sorry. Uh, extrude uh, in any direction you wish. We can go upwards, yeah, so you can build all sorts of different structures. Um, now, one final thing that I would like to cover is object overlap. So, uh, by default, let me just duplicate this and put it, uh, I know, let's just put it right over here. Uh, let's just say I want to extrude this, uh, this object in to the right, right? Um, by default, if I do that, you can see we get an object overlap here, uh, which is certainly something that you don't want most of the times. So, in order to in order to avoid that, uh, you can uh, you can tell the gizmo to actually perform collision checks by holding down the shift key, and if you hold down shift and drag, you can see that any objects that fall within this area where they would intersect this one, uh, they will they will be ignored and they will not be created. Um, one thing to note is that always the the leading object, right, will always be um, available. Sorry, it will never be destroyed. So, for example, if I drag only once, that will actually create an object overlap because um, what's actually happening is that when you extrude, a trail of objects is left behind, and the one like the, the last object is actually the original object and that's called the leading object and the leading object will always be available so I need to extrude uh, ah, sorry I wasn't holding down the shift key so I need to extrude uh, two more times to actually uh, one more time to actually make sure that no overlap occurs yeah so make sure that the leading object does not fall on one of the objects in the scene right um, because the leading object always has to be there this has to do with the fact that um, well, it's a little bit more complicated to explain. Um, I didn't want the extrude gizmo to, if, to affect the object selection, which means that the original object that is extruded needs to actually be moved as you, as you extrude instead of, you know, uh, creating new objects and selecting those uh, objects instead. In any case, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to concern yourselves with that. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.